Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For this video, I went on my Instagram and I asked you to send me your questions to do a Q&A. You guys love when I go into depth on the questions that you have for me and I also love them because I like to dive in deeper with you guys and connect in that way. And also what I've noticed recently, just from looking at the insights from the videos that I've posted, it definitely seems like you all prefer or maybe not all of you, but so many of you prefer just like these sit down and chat videos. And I think that's really interesting and also really great because I really love them. I love getting to share with you guys and to talk about things that are important to me, things that are on my heart. And the vlogs are really fun and different kinds of videos are really fun. But also, I don't know if that's what I really feel called to create long term anymore. And um, yeah, I kind of feel like I'm getting to a place of figuring out what it is that I want to create on here. And I've been trying a bunch of different things and I'm sure I won't exactly have the full answers and it will fluctuate as I fluctuate and where I'm at and life fluctuates, but it's just been really curious to see the differences on what videos you guys end up watching and which ones you don't. That all being said, let's start the Q&A. So if you would like to follow me on Instagram for the next time I ask for you to send me questions, you can find that linked down in the description below and let's get right into it. So first question is super broad, but I kind of like it. It's a good way to start is from I'm Auntie Lulu and she says, how's it all going? <laughs> How is it all going? Um, it's been a roller coaster and this whole season of my life has been such a roller coaster and some days I feel really good and I feel really empowered and I'm just like so on the right track with everything and just beyond grateful for everything in my life and where I'm going and how much I've learned. And then there's other days where I just feel like I'm drowning in the unknown of it all and it not being worked out and not really having a clear footing under me still and just kind of the uncomfortableness of that and the needing to lean on like my support system so much still. Yeah, that can be a lot to sit in and to feel and yet something we have all, I'm sure, experienced many times in our lives and I know I personally have. Um, and the ability to just sit in that and to really trust in yourself, to trust in the universe or in whatever it is that you believe in or yeah. I ultimately do think that it does work out how it's supposed to eventually. Uh, next question is from Katie the person. What do you do with your time when your kids are away? I actually just uploaded a vlog, a solo vlog of a day of me just like doing the things I was doing that day um, without the kids. And that was just kind of hodgepodge of, I had a lot of different projects happening at that time when I shot it and kind of hopping around trying to get things done. And so that's really what my life looks like when I don't have the kids. I have a bunch of different things that I'm like working on and managing and also trying to build and they're, a lot of them flow together and a lot of them are also very different. So a day in my life without the kids can really shift from day to day depending on which thing that I'm juggling I'm giving my energy and my focus to. And also, so like when I have my kids, uh, most of my evenings are spent at home. Like sometimes I will have my mom or someone else babysit and I'll go to like an ecstatic dance or an event or with friends or whatever. But for the most part, most of my evenings are spent at home, especially because that is often the time that I can really focus and get some things done. And I end up getting some work done in the evenings. And when I don't have my kids, I actually spend most of my evenings out. I just, I like to be out and I like to um, be with friends and with family and, and doing things. And I did not vlog that bit of my life for the vlog where it's a solo vlog. And I think, yeah, I don't know if I would. I'm not sure if I would or not. I think that a lot of the community and the people I have surrounded myself with and that I've like built connections with are not as open or interested in being, you know, documented in that way. It doesn't really feel important to me to push anyone in that way or necessary. And I don't feel like it's worth anyone's 
uh, uncomfortable feelings and it's actually kind of nice to have some boundaries of what is work and what is not because those can very much intermesh for me in in being a online creator another great question also from katie the person thank you katie for sending uh these questions you actually sent quite a lot of really good ones and i really appreciate your intentionality there um you asked what parts of you are you either rediscovering now or discovering for the first time <sighs> hmm something that i am stepping into now is completely different from anything that I've done and also that I've always felt a pull or a draw to and it has it's just a completely different shift like career-wise and that is facilitating or hosting like in-person events so I've spent most of my career doing stuff online and connecting with a bunch of people from all over the world but not in a way where I'm face to face with them and I have really, really been enjoying getting back into like the physical world and being with people and like face-to-face -face interactions and getting to really get that emotional connection. There is a difference. Like I love getting to read comments from you guys and I love getting to communicate with you guys and I like I really do. It is so meaningful. It's my favorite part of what I get to do here is the actual connection part is like sharing my heart and connecting with you guys. But it's hard to feel that level of connection when I can't see you face to face. There's definitely a difference and it can sometimes feel isolating for me of feeling like I'm here talking and I'm putting this out into the world, but I'm not really getting the feedback or the response of if I was sitting there face to face with you and we were having this conversation face to face. So yeah, so I have been afraid of public speaking like my whole life. <laughs> and I took a speech class in college that he, the professor was incredible and he really shifted my perspective on it of how this is an opportunity to like share your voice, to share your gift. This is a gift when you can show up and share this way. And I like that totally transformed my ability to be a public speaker. And I'm still like, I have a lot of anxiety and fear there and also unworthiness or not being enough, not good enough. All these things that come up for me when I have to do public speaking. And yet part of me loves it in these specific spaces where I get to offer or guide in a way that is something that is really important to me, like ecstatic dance or mindful movement or talking about like women empowerment, like all these different things that are really important to me and getting to share that, it just really lights me up. It energizes me and after the fact, after it's gone well <laughs> and after I get like the response from people, it just, fills me up so much. So like we've been doing these goddess dances here in town for over a couple years now, but we've kept them very, very small. We haven't really promoted them. And now they're taking on much more space and much more people are showing up and getting to facilitate where, no, it's not just like having a speech and like presenting something like that it's but still like taking on this active role of leading and guiding and facilitating and getting to share in that way has been something I'm learning and discovering about myself and stepping into and really really loving it next question is from bamber 66 hi Kelsey wondering if you would consider blogs which are completely free of the kids uh, yeah, that's funny. I just, you know, I just talked about that. Um, I just posted a vlog of me uh, without the kids and I do feel like, and I'm always torn on this because in one portion of this, one like perspective of this is I love documenting these moments with the kids. And if I'm not making a vlog and I'm not making, um, you know, not putting the effort in it to like put it out as content, I'm... I'm not gonna be shooting home videos. Like, yes, I will have clips on my phone and I'm taking little clips of my kids all the time. And maybe that's enough. 
but it's not going to be the same thing as like capturing a whole story or capturing a whole day and like make like getting the angles and really telling the story and i really love having those memories like i love having our camping trip from the summer documented and also my kids are getting older junie's in school Tabor's in preschool and i always when i had kids being a youtuber a creator i always felt in my heart like when they got old enough i didn't want them to be involved in the content like i wanted to give them their privacy i wanted them to feel like they had a normal childhood i never wanted them to feel like they were performing or had to be a certain way and show up as a certain way like i just wanted them to feel like they had so much space to just be themselves and have nothing to do with this online world that they don't understand at this level and will be so much a part of their lives anyways and not wanting to like push them into that um and so they're clearly still very much a part of my content you know like i have them in vlogs i have them in photos i have them they they are you know my children and i'm around them so much and they it's with the life that i lead where i work from home and it's hard to not have them in at all. Still kind of figuring out how this will look, but it doesn't feel like vlogs or having my kids in the content should be a main pillar on any platform, like Instagram, YouTube, any of them. And I would like to continue to shift in that direction where maybe there are special moments that are being documented. And also, I don't know, because sometimes when I'm documenting those special moments, I don't really feel super present in them. And yes, I have them to look back on later, but it can be hard to really be there if I'm like, oh, well, I wanna get this angle, or oh, I'm gonna, I need to capture this. And oh, you know, like thinking about how it's going to be captured instead of being there in it. And I really like the moments where I can set up the camera and just kind of like forget about it, like set it up at an angle and put it there and capture things. I don't know, so that maybe there's ways to work around it. And yeah, I do, I feel this pull to shift into something where my kids are not really part of my content. Okay, next question is from Imshell S. What are some health, both mental and physical advice you could give us? So I'm definitely not a physical or mental health professional, but I can just share like personally things that really help me that are kind of like my go-tos on um, when I'm struggling in both either mentally or physically. And I was actually just thinking about this the other day of what are my go-tos of when I'm feeling like really physically in a slump because I was, I was feeling that way recently. And um, the things that I always go to first and they are so simple and yet for me at least, they make such a huge difference. And the number one thing, like first thing I need to check in on myself with, am I drinking enough water? I know it seems so simple and like really does that make a difference it does like it really really does um and usually the answer is no i'm not drinking enough water so i start there i start to really track my water make sure i'm getting enough water and drinking enough water you need to be hydrated for like the energies to like pass through you and and if you've ever had any sort of like intuitive readings or channelings they always tell you to drink lots of water and i think it's because like energy is flowing through and you have to be hydrated to really allow it to flow through and then the next thing after that is uh working out like moving my body so that could be anything that could be going for a walk um, for me my favorite things are trail running or dancing but even just you know if i'm really low energy just getting out for a walk um, can do amazing things for how i'm feeling mentally and physically and then the other one is meditating. I have such a hard time keeping this as a regular practice. And when I drop it, when I drop it as a regular practice, I can feel it because I'm not carving out that space for my mind to just kind of rest. And I need it. We all need it to like rest, to, to just be instead of do. And it really, it creates all of these different awarenesses of like you start to notice um your thoughts your feelings things that are like 
patterns of thoughts. You just really get to know yourself when you can sit with yourself. Creating that level of awareness then helps me navigate different things in my life. Like I get to carry that with me into my daily life and be more self-aware of emotions that are coming up and how I can maybe not react directly to them and manage them differently. So those are definitely um, things that help me a lot. Um, if you have some that you would like to share, definitely do that and leave uh, those down in the comments below. That would be amazing. Okay, next question is from Sarah Stormborn 34 What's your favorite part about being single again? I, yeah, I've spent very little time of my life being single, so it feels like I have very little experience. <laughs> but I think my favorite thing about being single is that feeling of like openness and having like a world of possibility and just really being able to uh, take each moment and each experience and like and see where it leads and it's not necessarily that you have to fully like give that up if you're not single but I think there is definitely a more openness energetically at least from my experience of just seeing where things go and being open to whatever life offers and not feeling the energy of being considerate of like your partner and of course like I have kids so it's not like I'm like free to go wherever I want to go um, that's just not true and will not be true okay last question from Christina Ekman do you think you're ever gonna have more kids I don't know <laughs> I don't really feel a draw to have more kids. There's a few different things. One is like if I w chose to have another child with somebody else, I have this fear that my kids would feel replaced. And I know there's all kinds of blended families and there's all kinds of family dynamics. Obviously you can work it out and everyone can feel loved and cherished and everything. But I, I do have that fear and I never want that for them. I always want them to feel like so loved and I never want them to think, oh, like this is mama's real baby because this baby lives with mama all the time and we only live with her half the time. Stuff like that, I have fears about that. Um, so if I, whenever I consider like, would I have another child, those fears come up. The other thing is my kids are at an age now where yes, they're still young, but they are becoming increasingly more independent and self-sufficient and really becoming like these little people. And to the idea of starting all over again feels <sighs> intimidating and overwhelming. <laughs> because I feel like I've been gaining myself back and yes, like the pregnancy and the early motherhood stages, all of those are beautiful, beautiful times and I'm so grateful for them. And also to start over and be in that again when I've, when I've left it, um, feels like a lot to take on again. We'll see, it doesn't feel like a call and yet I also did always believe I would have three kids. So who knows? We will see how life plays out and what is meant to be. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video, for sending me your questions. I love diving in with you in this way. And if you have more questions, be sure to send them next time. I'm thinking I might want to do a live Q&A to mix it up. I don't know. Let me know if you think that is something you would be interested in and leave that down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of these videos. I'm trying to do two a week, but I just trying to get ahead in order to really make that realistic and make that happen. I just haven't quite gotten there yet, but there is at least usually one video a week and I would like to get that up to two. So thank you guys so much for your support, for your love, for your presence here in the digital world. And I'm so grateful for you all. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.